Welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be building a medieval water mill. So this is uh, part three of the series of videos I've been doing on the medieval village. Um, in that first episode, we built our farmhouses and worked out how to build a thatched roof with, uh, with party streamers. Uh, and then the second episode, we went to and we did the bakery uh, and then in this episode, we're doing the, uh, the water mill. So I figured if the, the village had a bakery, they're probably somewhere where they made the flour uh, in the water mill. Um, you know, some medieval towns would have had a, uh, you know, windmill. But uh, I went, uh, I already built a windmill in the channel, so I definitely wanted to do a water mill. And I kind of integrated it into the water tiles I've already created. So it all kind of flows nicely over, over the game table. Uh, so... I kind of stretched history a little bit here, uh, and just to make it a little more interesting, I made it a fortified uh, uh, water mill, figuring that, you know, they wanted to protect where the main source of their food sources is created, uh, kind of like a granary that's in a, in a keep or something like that, uh, similar to that. So anyways, I, I decided to make the top a little more interesting. I was just going to make it a standard Tudor style, like top, uh, second floor to the water mill. But I decided to, to go a little bit further and, and uh, you know, stretch history a little tad. Maybe there was one. You never know, <laughs> right? All right, so let's take a look at the finished product. So there's lots of elements in here. It took me actually quite a while to build this project. Um, so let's just take a look at it. You can see it's got kind of a... Uh, you know, a stone base on the bottom. Uh, we built some more river, which uh, matches the river tiles I've already built. Uh, and then we got uh, spent a lot of time uh, constructing this uh, wheel for the water water wheel. I think uh, well, for this water mill. I thought that was an important feature. Of course, we went back to the same standard thatched roof. So let's take a look around the whole base. And of course, this is playable. Um, here I made some, uh, I really like that door I built, kind of a I don't know, it looks more like a castle. And that's kind of wanted to have that look like it was a little bit of, kind of like this is a fort on top of being the uh, water mill. All right, so let's take it apart because it, it comes apart in three different pieces. So we got our top here, which actually separates. So maybe let's look at the bottom here and we'll look inside. So inside we got, you can see I actually spent a lot of time making details. There's some uh, bags of flour over here. And we got, this is where the uh, wheel turns the, you know, the grinder and grinds the, the, the grains and stuff in here. Comes out in a little hopper here and then they put them into these bags. So I kind of took a look at some historical pictures of, well, there's no historical pictures. Art, artist renditions of what it looked like. Uh, and then kind of uh, went from there. I also wanted to make this little, uh, so this, this wall is a little higher, uh, mainly just to encompass this uh, water wheel. But I made this platform here so, you know, you can have archers or crossbow men shooting out these uh, openings here, these windows. So you got a second floor right in the stone wall. So it's kind of, you know, more like a fort. Uh, so anyways, I got that on the bottom floor. Then we got on the top here. This is kind of like a palisade fort. I kind of went with the same old uh, track system to lock them into each other. I really like this, just making this simple as possible. Uh, and then this comes off the roof. So let's take a look at the second floor. Not a lot of super detail in there. I, I, you know, I made some really cool doors in here. I'll show you the doors. Kind of matches the one on the bottom. Um, anyways, I kind of left them open. You know, just a little like there's action going on. Maybe the guys are running out. Uh, and so you got this second floor. Now, the uh, all this around here fits the standard minis that I'm using. Uh, you can get a little bit of bigger mini in there. Like I was using my Firelock games for Blood and Crowns. But any uh, 28 mil you know, miniature would probably fit in there. I even used my uh, World War One ones with a wider base, and, and they still, I made enough space in there so you could get them in there. So you got all these uh, areas you can have your guys shooting off this uh, this top level here. Uh, and I have also here, uh, this is the roof. So again, track system, simple construction, pretty much. And then uh, I just wanted to mention one more thing about the bottom. Uh, you know, I don't, I didn't put a staircase just to save room. I actually went with like a ladder. So you get to this platform on the ladder and then you get, there's an opening on the floor you saw on the second floor. 
where the ladder comes out. So that's pretty much all the components. So it's kind of, there was a lot of complicated pieces in there, a lot of different techniques that I've done on the channel. Uh, but I really want to put it all together for this uh, water mill. This is something I've never done. Um, now, the other thing is, this is our last episode in this set. So I won't be doing anything in this uh, Plunder Den anymore. Uh, I'm moving, as I mentioned in a couple of episodes ago. And uh, so into a bigger space. I should be able to get a couple of game tables in there and uh, we'll have a, another area just for crafting and I can film my intros and stuff like that. So uh, really excited about moving to the new space. Uh, so I'll be off the air for probably two to three weeks, four weeks, depending on how long it takes and how long it takes me to set up. I won't have any time to craft anything. Uh, it's quite a big move. You can imagine, you know, I've seen all the stuff I've built over the years. There's going to be a lot to pack up in here uh and move on now there's a few things i sold off and and uh and there's probably some things in the future i'm going to sell off too just to make some more space uh so i can expand on in when i get into the new space uh you know get more uh terrain building uh so the plunder den is not going away it's just temporarily moving uh hopefully to a you know it's definitely gonna be a better space for for me for this uh for this channel all right, so that's it. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table. Let's start doing some painting and let's start some crafting. Okay, so let's look at some of the items I used for this project. Um, I got some of those hobby uh, pieces of wood, some willow fencing. Uh, we got our insulation foam, uh, all sorts of balsa wood, different sizes, shapes. Uh, we got some coffee stir sticks. Um, that's the usual brand I get from the dollar store. It's uh, they're really nice and thin. We got some regular popsicle sticks. Uh, got some egg cartons. The paper egg cartons that we use for some stones. Uh, of course, we've got our party streamer for our thatched roof. Uh, dollar store foam board. The uh, ready board that I usually use. So most of the items here I usually get at the dollar store, Walmart, Home Depot, uh, sometimes Michaels. So I started off by planning it out using my two river tiles that I built on the channel. And I really wanted this water mill to fit within that space. Um, so when I'm playing it on the table, it'll cross the entire uh, uh, span of the table. This is a 4 by 8 table that I have here. Um, so it's about 4 feet across. So I kind of just cut it out of dollar store foam board. Kind of just, I usually draw right on top of it. Just to kind of see what the building is going to look like. Does it look proportionally correct? Uh, then I grab my minis, which I usually do, uh, and start placing them in the space um, to see if it's the right uh, size. And I really, I, I haven't decided how I'm going to build the mechanisms inside of this water mill. Um, and I figured maybe I should probably start with the wheel itself. Uh, and I'm just kind of drawing in the thickness of the walls. So I just got my roll of, this is a roll of duct tape, uh, and then a, my uh, a huge miniatures mud paste there. I just figured they were perfect circles, um, and it kind of made, just traced them off onto this dollar store foam board. And I was just kind of looking for round shapes that would be the right scale um, for this. So I cut them out. Uh, I just showed you the sandpaper because I sanded out the, the loops a little bit. And I wound up cutting them out with that uh, hobby knife sometimes they're a little bit rough so then I cut out the center as you can see there I kind of made a little uh, center space and made the widths for this dowel I got here uh, and that's kind of gonna kind of hold the wheel together and push into the wall so I, I kind of just used my army painter black paint here as the center size just to sh show you what i measured out to, to use it i just looked for round shapes to be honest to try to figure it out so that worked out uh, great uh, and then i started using some coffee stir sticks so i kind of wanted to frame out this entire wheel uh, to figure it would be a, a double wheel and then kind of glue them together 
Um, it's hard to carve wood or shape it into a round shape. That's why I went with a dollar store foam board. And I also have to cut the bottoms of this wheel because it uh, it's going to be within the water, right? So I kind of cut my um, coffee stir sticks in that shape. You can see I kind of let a square in the center. Uh, that's the same size as a dowel. Uh, and I'm going to have to trim the bottom off because I want it to be flush with those uh, smaller um, coffee stir sticks in the bottom. So this is after I cut the foam board off the bottom. Uh, and you can see they're nice and flat. I'm just using my hand, but I, <laughs> I did use a ruler. Uh, of course, I got my working mat, which is, you know, getting pretty rough, but you can still kind of see if it's a straight line or not. So then I just temporarily put the dowel in the middle here, mainly just so I can construct the rest of the wheel. Uh, and it's kind of sitting uh, flat. Uh, and then I can start gluing other components to it to uh, make up the wheel. So I really just wanted to connect the two together, so I figured that would be a good width. Uh, and I got some coffee stir sticks, and now I'm going to add them uh, all the way around it to essentially attach them together. All right, so this is after I've glued them together. I pretty much uh, staggered them between the, the longer pieces, the longer supports. Uh, and then I started wanting to wrap the detail around the sides. Um, so it just looks like it's a lot of spokes on a wheel. Uh, and so I just wanted to add that detail on there as well. So I went and glued those uh, all to it. Uh, and then I decided to make kind of a, yeah, kind of like a scoop, uh, really. That's what the water gets caught into and pushes the wheel around uh, on a water uh, water wheel. So uh, that's kind of what I was going for there. I figured I'd just glue those uh, coffee stir sticks in a slant. And so you got kind of little scoops on it. I did that all the way around, completed uh, all those other pieces, uh, and pretty well all uh, this wheel is uh, pretty well fabricated. So then I kind of uh, took it and put it onto my Dollster foam board mat here that I'm building the whole structure on, and just kind of see how it fits in there, where exactly. I ended up moving it a little bit forward, and that's why I do a lot of planning here, just to make sure everything lines up properly. So these are our walls. I already measured it uh, earlier, uh, the thickness. Uh, and then I kind of figure out uh, the basic, it's kind of like an L shape, to be honest. That's what it looks like it works out to. I decided to put a couple of windows in it. Now it's a little bit taller than I normally would, so it's almost uh, three inches, mainly because there's that water wheel there. So I wanted the second floor to be a little bit taller or over top of the wheel. And I just cut out all the shapes here. Uh, and I uh, started putting in, uh, that's really coffee stir sticks in there to frame out the windows. And you can see that I've uh, left one side with the paper on and taken one side off uh, and texturized it with a tinfoil ball. I've done this before on some of my projects. Uh, just to add a little bit more strength to the one side. Uh, because we're going to glue stones to that side, it doesn't really matter if it's got the paper on that side. And we just really want the texture on the inside. Now this one's got, I'm keeping the paper on both sides because I'm going to do a kind of like a, a facing uh, where the wheel is of stone inside um, as well. So kind of like an accent wall. And then I uh, got my small balsa wood and we're just going to finish framing out these windows. So now that I've fabricated everything, I'm going to, I just showed you my hot glue gun. I'm just going to hot glue it all together. Uh, but I'm not going to put glue the wheel down. That's still going to be loose. So I, I, you can see I put a hole in that one wall. And uh, kind of that's where the height of my of the grinder is going to be. So kind of the mechanics on the inside. And I decided to, where those two windows are, I kind of wanted to build um, kind of a shelf there. Or, or a set, like a sub-level, essentially. So uh, I can have archers shooting out those windows. But before we're going to do that, I use my willow uh, sticks here and kind of frame out the house. This gives it a lot more support. Um, so I kind of glued them on all the corners. And you can see I'm starting to build that uh, stepway there or walkway there around the windows. Uh, and the one side is eventually going to be a staircase going up to the upper level. At, or it's a ladder, really, not a staircase. Uh, and then I'm going to add some 
balsa wood trimming in here just to kind of give it a little more support as well. And now it's time to build some stones. Um, so if you've seen me done this on the channel before, that's just insulation foam. I cut them into, you know, just strips and then cut them into rectangles. And then I cut them into three different shapes or four different shapes of, uh, of stone. So in the reference pictures I had of some of the water mills, they all had kind of like a stone wall that was kind of on the one side. I wonder if it's probably just to trap the water and help the wheel spin even more. Um, but they usually have like a, kind of like a concrete pillar in there. So I really wanted to capture that. Um, so just right at the back side of that wheel. Uh, and so I just carved two pieces of insulation foam. Uh, and really those bricks I just I drew them on was a pencil. Uh, and I kind of just texturized the bottom with a tinfoil ball. And then uh, I started gluing the bricks to the outer, uh, outside of the entire piece. So there is actually quite a bit of steps here. Uh, obviously, we're still not going to glue the wheel in, but I constantly go back to make sure it fits right, uh, that before the, the bricks dry, that uh, they're not leaning the wheel in a certain way, uh, that it's still straight, uh, which will make it easier to glue it to the mechanisms on the inside. And also, uh, I was just showing you that accent wall. Um, I want to also put bricks in that side. So just like there's a, a very sturdy outer wall there that the wheels attach to which would sound it just seems more more realistic in the construction of the whole thing so this is after i've done all the stone work it's a little tricky around the i uh, did an archway doorway which i usually don't i usually do look straight but i uh, wanted to add a little more give it a little more castle feel because this is a this is a fortified uh <laughs> water mill um so now i'm going to add the um egg carton shell stones that I've done for uh, for most of the medieval builds that we've done for this village. I just kind of like that stone look. It looks more like a, I look very medieval, <laughs> uh, opposed to the wooden planks, but we're gonna put wooden planks on the second floor. So now I'm, I'm starting to build the actual uh, grinder on the inside. Uh, I went and got some of my hobby uh, shapes that I have, those hobby pieces of wood. Uh, you can get those at the dollar store. They have squares and circles and they're different sizes. Uh, now, the thing to remember is the height of where it has to be um, connected to the water wheel. So that's how much height I have to build up. So you can see I kind of just made a little platform. I doubled it up on the bottom with the square pieces and kind of made it like a, that's kind of the turbine. Uh, I might have to cut down those uh, pegs a little bit because they're too long. Uh, and uh, I know I've kind of jumped a few steps here, but... Uh, really, I just kind of uh, used uh, coffee stir sticks to kind of make an outer wall. I made a second wheel that they're connected to. So I, I used a lot of reference pictures to look at what uh, those grinders look like. Uh, and that's kind of how it is. It, you know, it turns the wheel and it turns the turbine on the inside. And that's what grinds it. So I spent a lot of time <laughs> working on the mechanisms and made sure that it's the right height. So it's the perfect height of where that dowel is coming to the wall. Um, to glue it to uh, together there. So I really wanted to spend a lot of time on the details. Similar to the bakery, um, I just want this whole medieval village to be really detailed uh, so you can play through all the buildings. So I'm kind of laying out where I'm going to have my walkway. Uh, now that I have my uh, turbine in there, I can kind of, or my grinder, I can kind of determine how much space I have for that walkway. So I, I essentially had to build that first to determine that. So then I cut out some larger pieces of insulation foam. Uh, this is similar to the river tile. If you watch that episode, uh, I cut them out and put them in the coffee tin, shook, shook them up. And these are kind of these, these are the river stones, right? On the side of the river bank. Now, of course, I'm building it on a flat surface, so I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use my uh, resin technique where I don't have to have, you know, a reservoir or have a deep or anything like that. Uh, this is going to be um, flat, obviously. So we're going to just use a brush on of the resin. But first, we got to put the drywall compound. And this is a really important step uh, because it kind of creates the movement in the water or the waves. And you can see I left that little square uh, uh, really with no, resin, uh, with, uh, no drywall compound on it because that's where the wheel's going to sink in a little bit. So we're just going to leave that the way it is. 
So then I'm just going to have to let that dry. And uh, you can see the wheel's all done. Uh, my grinder's all done. Just kind of showing you all the base floor components. They're pretty well done. Uh, and the drywall compound is dried. Uh, and now we're ready for a black coat. Now you, you can see I didn't finish the walkway on the inside. Mainly because I wanted to finish the paint first. If I would put the walkway on, it would be too hard to paint it. So I kind of, I'm going to do that at the very end almost. Uh, so this is the second floor. I kind of want it to be like a little Tudor style. I want it to overhang over top of the wheel. So I kind of played around with this for a while. I know I wanted to have a couple doorways and a walkway that goes all the way around it. Because I wanted to make it kind of like a palisade fort. Um, you know, kind of just really sell the fortified uh, water mill. Uh, opposed to just, uh, you know, I could have just put a, a rooftop or a structure on the top uh, other than a fortification. So this is simple, just essentially a square, uh, four walls, put a couple windows on two of them, doorway on two of them, uh, and I'm just going to hot glue that on there and kind of have my frames. Um, but before we hot glue it on, I actually ended up taking off the paper on both sides uh, because we're going to go with... Uh, planks on the outside you know to give more of a tudor style look opposed to the stone base so we had to take the paper out both sides uh and uh frame out the windows similar to the bottom floor they're going to do the same thing as the top floor um and i've done that on all the builds in this uh medieval village so it's a, it's a mixture of um, balsa wood and coffee stir sticks coffee stir sticks are a little wider so you can put it on the base of the door, and you can use it as a window seal. Uh, and then your two types of different uh, balsa wood there to frame out the windows. Skinny, the skinniest piece in the middle for the framing of the window. So you should have something like this when you're done. I let those dry up. They actually didn't take long with the white glue. They don't take long. Uh, but then uh, definitely uh, I use the hot glue to actually put the structure together. I don't like using white glue and letting it dry because then you kind of have to keep it straight and they bow a little bit because we took the paper off. Hot glue just glues it on straight. So then I moved to, um, I wanted to have an opening uh, in the middle there. That's kind of where the ladder's coming up to. Um, and it kind of just goes down to the, to the uh, grinder down below. So I Kind of framed that out as well. I went with a coffee stir stick uh, floor up here, so it's a wooden planks instead. Um, then the obviously there wouldn't be stone up there on the second floor. It'd make more sense to have wooden planks on the second floor. So then uh, using my willow uh, sticks here from my willow fencing, and I'm just going to uh, frame it out as the same as I did for the base. Uh, and this is similar technique to the other two buildings we already built for the medieval village. I just wanted to make it feel like it's all part of the same, you know, same town, right? Same, similar construction. So then I went off to use coffee stir sticks and went around the, you know, the walkway all the way around the top floor. I kind of went a little fancy with the pattern. Uh, now, when I started gluing these uh, planks on, I, I kind of forgot that I should paint the bottom black. Uh, just to offset any potential warping that may occur. So I just paint that bottom with black crap paint, uh, and it, it counteracts the gluing of the sticks on there. So now I'm moving to uh, kind of framing out or selling this Tudor style on the outside of the walls here. So you kind of just use your coffee stir sticks and uh, kind of did a frame on the top and the bottom. This all gives extra support to the whole structure as well. So you got those uh, the willow uh, fencing on the inside, and you can see I kind of trimmed the top in there as well. This also will make it easier for when I make the track system on the bottom uh, to, in, you know, so everything fits together properly. So I went with a few dowels on the corners. Uh, I kind of was inspired by some of the uh, towers that were in Braveheart, the movie. Um, and obviously this is much larger, um, but that original uh, fort that they had uh, in, that, in the Scottish town there, um, they had to, these palisade kind of towers. And they, they were kind of sharp sticks in the corners and, then, and other timbers to make up the uh, the tower. So I kind of wanted to copy that uh, somewhat and just to make it look more like a, a one large tower, but it's on top of, um, of the water mill. 
So that's uh, uh, for the very rooftop. So there's actually three components, the base, the second floor, uh, and then we're going to build a small roof cap for this um, structure at the top here. So really simple construction. Essentially just made a rect rectangle here. I uh, got some larger balsa wood that I'm going to put between these two triangles uh, that are going to be the uh, upper part of it. Um, and then I kind of went to the frame system. Uh, so the same thing I did with the bakery. Uh, same kind of uh, design. Uh, and then I just got some more dollar store foam board here. And this is going to be the, the tops on there. That I'm going to just glue to those uh, that structure I put on there. And essentially, it's just a super easy roof. Now, I like putting the dollar store foam board. as I could normally use a, a cardboard stock, but this gives it a little more thickness uh, to help me sell the thatched roof a little bit with the party streamers. So that's why I like to use the dollar store foam board. Uh, you can see I'm starting to uh, frame it out with some coffee stir sticks uh, to carry up that uh, Tudor style to the top level. Then I decided to go back in, finish uh, gluing the staircase into the inside of the uh, the base. Uh, and you can see that I've uh, kind of completed all these components. And now we're going to add crab, black craft paint to it. Now, I didn't show you, but the, the, I did build the track system on the t uh, bottom of that roof. I haven't done it on the second floor yet, but uh, we'll do that in a bit. Uh, so these are the party streamers, and uh, of course in the last two episodes, um, if you go and watch the uh, farmhouse, I, I go into a lot more depth of how I put the party streamers onto the roof or apply it. Uh, right now I'm just showing you where I, I just cut them down, uh, and then I, I, I glue them on with white glue. And on the very top, I kind of leave it as one solid piece, but uh, trim it all the way around, uh, and that gives you kind of a, a cap piece. So you should have something like that when you're done. So now I moved on to making my doors. So I got several doors I got to build. I got to build one for the base floor. I got to build some for the upper floors. So I want uh, some jewelry from Michaels and some beads. Uh, I'm going to put some bolts on the door and make it look real medieval, like uh, with two metal strips on it with bolts and then have a ring door handle. So I kind of used coffee stir sticks and those little jewelry pieces. Uh, and then while I was doing that, I wanted to make some flower uh, bags for inside the base where the uh, grinder is going to be. So that's the track system. That was just some dollar store foam board. Uh, and I kind of fit it so it fits in there snug. Now, at the top, I wasn't sure if I was going to make some wooden log um, kind of supports. So I decided to just do it on this one side. Uh, so I had to go back and fill in the gaps. I left gaps there with some uh, dollar store foam, not actually uh, insulation foam bricks. So that kind of finishes off the whole look. Uh, and then this is going to sit right on those logs there. Just to look like there's a couple support beams there. So I just kind of added that uh, detail to the one side. So then we went back again to the black craft paint. We're going to hit the thatched roof, the doors. Uh, the flower bags um, and then some of the bricks and stones and uh, I'm just showing you that I made those out of the dollar store foam board and when I put them down there I actually pinched them so I can show you my fingers I pinched them and then glued it down so it makes it look like it's a full uh, flower bag that came out really good actually so that's after I've added the black craft paint to all the components uh, and we are about ready to move on to the under or base coats uh, of the paint job as this entire thing. So this actually took quite some time. I think I was working on this project for a couple of weeks, uh, to be honest. Uh, it took me uh, quite a while to fabricate all this. So I'm just going to use that real brown and uh, kind of cover everything uh, with that. This is the standard um, base colors I always use. Um, bark brown's the next color um, and then we're going to move on to the pablo in the next step so i'm just really kind of briefly going through this um, just so you can see what colors i use uh, on the base coats which is the same i always use i, I like these three tones it gives me a good earth tone feel makes it feel like all my terrains from the same world 
and I really uh, like to just stick with that same base coat. So you can see that Pebble's been on there. I've kind of highlighted a few areas, brightened up a few areas on the base decks, uh, on the on the where the water's going to go, uh, some of the stonework on the sides, the sandbags, uh, and then I'm going to go to a real brown and yellow ochre combination. I'm going to mix the two together. Uh, I've done this also for a lot of my decks and my ships and docks and stuff. Uh, could put them together as a it's kind of a darker yellow. Put that down first. Uh, and then I go back to the yellow ochre and put it on again. Now the camel is for all the stonework. So we're going to paint all that stonework. And I, I just put it on lightly because I want to keep some of those nice browns and undertones that I've kept underneath. And I add a little bit of camel to the door. Add a little bit to the, uh, obviously the base stones. You can see I put a little bit on the doors. A little bit on the wheel. Starting to lighten uh, lighting up the uh, water wheel there. Uh, and I hit the floors on the upper floor. So this is mummy robe, uh, and uh, we're going to even lighten up the stones even more, uh, lighten up those flower bags. And then we're going to move to some speed paints, uh, Graveland Gray, some um, dark wood, uh, and uh, hardened leather, sand golem. Those are all the colors we're going to use uh, on all the wood in here, uh, just to kind of give it a more aged look. we got our army green. And our uh, scale hide. Uh, we're going to add some greens to the uh, walls on the outer part of the building. And then I kind of want to do some some of those colors on the on the wheel itself. And give it kind of an old, uh, more of a green look to it. Now this is to add some grunge to it. we uh, got our uh, commando green, malignant green. we got our skeleton horde, agrax earth shader. All my... Uh, uh, sand golem, all my my grunge team, I call them. <laughs> Add kind of a you know plant life to everything and giving it a good weathered look. So now it's finally time to put the planks on the second floor. So I used a, a dark wood on the bottom of those planks, so they're they're kind of colored. Then I glued them down. Those are just coffee stir sticks, uh, and then I went over with uh, um, hardened leather on top. So now we're going to color the water. So we got this deep uh, blue. We got uh, a gray ultramarine blue. And that's going to be the kind of the center, the deepest part of the river. Uh, and then we got hydra uh, blue. We got, uh, sorry, turquoise crystal blue, uh, void shield blue. Those are our lighter colors. They're going to be the closest to the shoreline. And then I kind of use this highland uh, blue uh, speed paint to kind of mix some of the colors together. So I got kind of this going on here. So you just remember to keep your darks to the center uh, and then your lights to the edges and then kind of use that speed paint to kind of mix some of them together. So then I also use this uh, huge miniatures iron, which I absolutely love that color uh, for some of the metallics in here. I'm going to use some white to highlight the uh, flower bags in here, just so they don't look the same as the stones that are in there, right? You want it to be a little bit lighter uh, so you can clearly define what they are. Uh, and then we're going to glue all these pieces into place. So this is the resin I use, Art Mines. It comes from Michael's uh, Craft Store, and it's got a blue color to it already. I just get a garbage brush, which I plan on throwing out after I'm done this. It's a one-shot deal. And I'm only going to add a little bit over to the top. So, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't pour resin so it's in the reservoir or something. Or make, I just uh, use it to put over top. So now we got all those nice blue undertones painted in. We just throw this resin over top of it. Uh, and it gives the illusion of depths in your water. And, of course, the resin is shiny. So you got, uh, with the drywall compound, it creates waves. It looks like uh, uh, water. This is a very uh, easy way to get around pouring lots of resin and get a real uh, good river or natural look to it. You could use different colors and probably get a muddy river if you want, right? Uh, and then I glued the wheel finally in place. Uh, in that sunken area, so now it looks like the wheel's in the water. Uh, 
Now, to make the wheel look a little wet, I take this gloss varnish uh, effect paint by Army Painter, and I kind of add it on there so it looks like the wheel's been rotating through the water and it's all uh, wet. So this is uh, the next morning. I came back at it. The resin is all hardened, uh, and, uh, and it's in great shape. So now it's time to add some plant life. So I had my dollar store foam, uh, like well, not my foam, the moss that I cut up. I got my huge miniatures. I like to mix those two colors together. Um, uh, gamer grass, some jungle turf, uh, just some tufts, and uh, all game terrain. I love that those little flowers. Just I like to put a nice variety of different flowers, different tufts. Just to make it, uh, in, when you see plant life in, in nature, it has a lot of different, um, you know, you want to have a lot of different plant life. You don't want to have a repeat of the same thing over and over again. It, it just doesn't look natural. So just to sell the ways a little bit more, I went with my white craft paint. And this just kind of gives me a wake or movement more. I highlighted some of the raised areas, only a little bit. I think in my river tiles, I probably went a little overzealous with the white. Um, so I really toned it down a little bit on this one. And I, I, I like it a lot better. It's, I just wanted a little bit on the edges around where the wheel is. Uh, and that's where the white would be. So we're just kind of doing a, a, a complete view of the entire thing. We're just spinning through. It's all completed. All the plant, plant life is glue, glued down. Uh, all the floors, all the track systems, everything's dry. All the paint's dry, the resin's dry. Uh, and uh, we are complete this project, but I'm just kind of going through all the different uh, different floors. So I'm really happy how this turned out. Uh, this is one of my favorite projects, I would have to say. And it's my last one in this, this plunder den. Uh, we're going to, of course, move on to another space and uh, start more projects. All right, so let's take a look at the battlefield. So I got my uh, uh, Blood and Crown stuff came in the mail, as you know in the uh, unboxing episode. And I'm getting closer to getting uh, two armies done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm running around about 40 miniatures done now, but uh, uh, I want to kind of have 40 miniatures for both sides. So I got a little ways to go. Uh, so I'm just showing you some of the new miniatures that I painted up while I was building this. So I, like I kind of said on the first episode, I kind of wanted to paint some miniatures as I went along um, so I can kind of finish my armies as I'm building the terrain so this all gets completed at the same time. I didn't get it done before the Kickstarter arrived, but uh, I imagine in the next couple episodes uh, I'll get this all completed and uh, we'll have our medieval village completed. So I'm just showing you how it integrates in the river from a distance. Uh, and I'm really happy how this whole uh, uh, project turned out. So let's take one more look at the inside. Uh, really happy with these floors. No, I just left the doors open like that because I wanted to have it look like there's some action going on. I'm also really happy with the walkways around. Uh, fits the miniatures nice. And the walkway down on the uh, bottom floor for my crossbowmen. All right, so that's pretty much it for this uh, project. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to get to the new Plunder Den and start the next part of this village. All right, I'll see you in the next one.